Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer, and welcome to a special Pro Cycling Manager 2020 tutorial. This one for career mode on how to build a world tour team on a budget. How to get those riders who are under the radar, who are paid a bit less, and still not only make it to the world tour, but make it in the world tour, as in be successful. I'm going to do this in two primary phases. First phase is I'm going to show you what type of riders could make up an ideal budget world tour team. So we're going to go into the custom team at the start of a career, and we're going to pick out those types of riders. So you can see what kind of riders to go after. But then we're also going to, in the second phase, go into the dossiers and into a signing period and show what it takes to get after these riders within your career mode itself, especially if you're doing a long-term project. For those who haven't seen before, I have a 160 episode career mode right here in PCM20 on the hardest difficulty setting. And we started with a budget of just over 20,000 in our first season down in the continental level. We have our third year in world tour competition right now. We still have a budget of about 84,000 at this point in time. And yet we've got three years in the world tour. We're finally gonna top 100,000 next season. We have the reigning rider of the year, reigning Tour de France winner this year, a podium in the Giro, another win in the Tour de France. And right now we're in the middle of leading La Vuelta. Let's begin with an overview and the parameters on what it is I wanna do on this custom build just to show you what type of riders that we would want to get after. First off, the budget that we're setting, we're going to go for 100,000 or less, which means that's that's actually a pretty good amount of money that, that you can spend. You'll quickly see that that's actually pretty challenging just to keep it under 100,000. First off, in order to compete in the world tour, you should have three teams in place, seven riders per team, times three, because you can have up to three things on the calendar at once, that's 21 riders. In most races, you can get away with having six riders. And you don't often have three races going on at once. You will, as a World Tour team, very often have two races going on at once. So you're looking at minimum 14 riders to fill those out. You need probably more than 21 riders to have a proper team. But on a budget, you're not going to get there. You're not going to have that option. You can just about get away with a minimum as a World Tour team of 18 riders. What you can do in that scenario is you can get your requisite seven in an objective race. And then you can throw six into another race that starts that same day. And that only leaves you about five riders left over. So if you do end up with that third one day classic race, you throw five riders in at it and that's your entire team at your disposal. Now, if you take on an injury or two, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble on trying to fill out a team for that third race. So 18 really, really scraping bottom. At 18 riders and just a hundred thousand dollars that's not much money per rider that i mean we're, we're talking about an average of just five thousand per rider now if you want to make the world tour here's what it takes the determination on what is a world tour team versus what is continental or continental pro is the combined average of your top three riders on your roster so if you have a 78 a 77 and a 76 and everybody else below that average add those three up divide by three and you get an average of 77. now behind the scenes in the code it does break down into tenths and smaller you could have a 77.234 as your overall team average that is then drawn in comparison to everybody else and the top 19 teams are going to make the world tour. So the first key is you need three good riders, but you're gonna have to acquire them and maintain them and keep them on a budget. And here's why. Let's take a look at the available riders, which as we're doing a custom team is literally everybody. And you can see right off the bat, Julian Alaphilippe, who is an 80 overall, would definitely go a long ways to help get into the world tour, but he's making 186 thousand what was the budget we set a hundred thousand he's nearly making double what our budget is and that's our budget for the entire team we're just getting underneath a hundred thousand finally at Niels Pollitt but again we need him plus 
17 to 19 additional riders. So we can't afford any of the top riders in the sport. That complicates things quite a bit. And you're going to have to get very, very creative in how you go about getting your riders. So obviously, in order to qualify, we're going to need three good riders. What I have here for our sample just goes to show how much work it takes to put together a world tour team on a budget. The game gave us a budget of 800000 We are using nearly 300000 of that just to put together a team that is very similar to the Kurumo team that I have right now, which is budgeted at 84000 a third of the size of the budget of this actual squad based on some of these real world riders. Let's start with what that core is. Our top rider is Jasper Stoyven, who's a classics rider. He's a 78 overall, which we needed. I couldn't get 77s to get us into the world tour. We needed to have a 78 to get into the world tour. And that involved Stoyven, who is just about the cheapest 78 we could get our hands on. Classics rider, 80 cobble rating. But you can see he's also well disciplined in other areas. He's a little bit punchy with a 74 hill rating. He's got a 75 sprint. He's got 76 resistance. So a lot of short punchy stages, a lot of sprints. He can get at least good results, if not necessarily wins. Our next rider is the reigning Giro d'Italia winner, which is Teo Gegenhart. He's a, a 79 mountain 76 hill, 75 resistance. He's a good rider. He's a solid rider. And at a 77 and just 25 years of age, a 40,000 budget is a lot. It's probably more than you can afford. The reality is you can just about get away with your top rider if you have a 100,000 budget. Top rider at about 40,000 is manageable. And as a good, solid climber, he can get you a lot of results, enough so that he's won one grand tour. And also, the way that's going to come down is he's going to have a solid reputation. He's already got a good reputation. He rides on a very big team in Ineos in real life. That's a factor for one of your top riders is you do need somebody who's going to have a bit of a reputation. Our third leader is Jasper Philipson, a 76 overall. Philipson, a very young up and coming sprinter, 22 years of age. My career mode from PCM 2019, we got an absolute ton of wins with Philipson as our primary sprinter. You can see here, he's still developing, just 22 years of age, 79 sprint, 78 acceleration, fairly good resistance and flat ratings. And one extra area, and again, this is that crossover point, 71 cobble rating. He's not going to win Perry Roubaix with that type of rating. He's not going to win the Tour of Flanders. Other races that only have two or three or five or six weaker cobble sections, and especially not right near the finish line, he can get through those, especially if he's got some support from a teammate, and then be able to compete at the end. And if some of the other sprinters who have mid-60s or lower kind of cobble ratings are in that race, they might get knocked out. They might be left behind. You might be in a group of 70 or 80 at the finish, and a lot of the sprinters aren't there, in which case he could definitely pull some wins in that manner. But you're going to need some quality support. Now, realistically, I would not sign McNulty or Sivakov. Not to this kind of money. Not for almost 50000 combined between the two of them. But if you could get these two riders signed at... 12,000 or 14,000 in the game, a 75, a 74, it can happen. Can. I'm not saying it will, but it can. He's the one who's going to protect Gegenhart on those bigger climbs, and you're going to need a couple guys that can do that. From there, we go a little bit further down, but going into what is actually affordable. Oscar Rodriguez is only a 71 overall. He really is isolated to one strong attribute, which is that climbing. But at just 4,500, this is the type of rider that needs to be filling out a squad of this nature, a budget squad. One sprinter is not going to be enough. You're going to need a couple of lead out riders at minimum and maybe riders to compete on other days. And so a good young sprinter in Max Cantor, he's a little too expensive, 16000 for just a 73 overall. Uh, again, I would not sign him at 16000 but he could definitely boost a squad and would be a good lead out rider with a 75 sprint, 73 acceleration, also good recovery. So he can handle the, the grand tours if you're, 
targeting something like a points classification. And if you are lacking the overall depth to really compete in GC, you might be looking at something like trying to take a points jersey or just winning stages, in which case he'd be very helpful for that. And then we get into having a puncher, something we don't quite have with the squad yet. So Jay McCarthy is actually a real quality poor man's puncher. He's only a 73 average overall, and therefore it brings his cost down a bit, 16,000. 28 years of age, okay, well, probably not going to develop much, but he's a little bit sprint capable. He's got decent stamina, and with a 77 hill rating, he's not going to get you a lot of wins, but he's going to get you a lot of top 10s on punchy stages. And so if you have a punchy classic and a sponsor objective where you need to get a top 10, he's capable of doing that. And so he can definitely pay for himself in the long term with that ability, especially without somebody else on the team who themselves can then do that. Another one who is in that somewhat affordable range as a climber but also combo is Sam Uman, which I'm really surprised his ratings aren't better. He's only 25 years of age, 73 overall, but he can climb, he can punch, he's got some resistance. At least a season or two ago, Uman was recognized as somebody who has very high potential. And so at 14,000, if you have him signed for three years, he could be a 77 or a 78 overall at the end of that three year contract and be incredibly infect, uh, effective to how your team is going forward. From this point forward, we have the completion of the team. This is the real budget section. You can see every rider the rest of the way down the list is between a 69 and 72 overall. They're all under 10000 on their cost. Really only two riders on this entire list making the list on a minimum salary. Most of these riders are all going to be about 25 or younger. Some of them 19, 20, 21 years old. Prospects, hopefully with potential. You get these guys signed on to two or three year deals. The longevity piece they take over as your leaders by the end of their contracts. We have classics riders, we have punchers, we have climbers to support in the climbs, the, the more intermediate ones, the ones who are going to serve as domestiques on a climbing stage, but they'll do okay. If you if you send a, a 63 mountain, like a sprinter, a, a 55 mountain, there you go, in Koish, who's just 19 years of age. You can see Koish is very isolated as a sprinter. You don't want him uh, on a climbing stage as your domestique. You want somebody like Carol, who's a 73 mountain, 68 resistance. He's not going to hang on forever, but he's going to get you halfway up a climb or two-thirds of the way up a big climb as a support rider, and he's going to help your leader out much longer. Whereas Koish, if you put him on that same stage, one or two kilometers into a climb, he's already gone right out the back of the peloton and therefore did nothing to help your cause. And on a budget, you're going to need help because your top riders are not matching the top riders of other squads. You need to boost them by bringing a supporting cast who's going to do the dirty work and help get your leaders just that little bit farther, which is going to make them competitive. So we can see here from creating a custom squad, you can get into the world tour on a somewhat affordable budget, but at nearly 300000 that's a lot. That's a lot of money already. Now, there are teams with massive budgets compared to that. This is way too much. I mean, this is, like I said, triple what I spend on my squad, my career mode squad. And I have better ratings on the whole than this. I've got about 19 riders. This is 20 for a third of the money and ever so slightly better on the overall average of the entire squad. It can be done. So in that first phase, we see that it's quite clear you cannot build a World Tour team on a $100,000 budget, at least not on the base salaries that riders have, not on the existing contracts. There is another way to do it. The start point is trying to stay within the budget and have the potential to get there. It wouldn't get you there immediately, 
but in time. I've now built a totally different team. 16 riders, good enough to be Continental Pro, and just 81,000 for a start salary. And pretty competitive for a Continental Pro team at this point in time. And then you can see where this is going and how this can become a World Tour team. So what we have here is a totally different level of rider. Minimum that we have is a 69 average. We have a bunch of 70s and 71s, and then a couple of 72s. And you'll see how this plays out real quick and where it's possible to make this happen. A 72 is not going to get you into World Tour. Not even close. Van Wilder is a 19-year-old stage racer. 73 mountains, 74 time trial, 69 resistance, 70 recovery. Very young, but with a bit of talent already. Selecting these riders up front, I don't know what their actual potential is and how much they're going to develop, but you'll quickly see what the theme is on what could make this possible. Now, getting into the 72s, we're already looking at riders that are earning over 10,000. And that obviously adds up very, very fast in the money department. These can get you leaders. Now at 19, Van Welder hopefully has high potential. And if he does have 5'8 potential and is a 72 overall already, if he was on a three-year contract with that 11,000, by the end of that third year, we're looking at a rider easily. Could be a 77 or a 78. Three years is a lot of time. That is the key to building a world tour team. Three-year contracts, young riders, high potential. Get them where they're affordable. Get them young. Get them where they haven't quite yet hit that rating that is going to demand a high salary. You're going to end up losing a lot of these riders in the end, but this is how you build a world tour team on a budget. You've got to just sign these super high potential young riders who are right on the verge, who are almost there already. So Van Welder and Mark Donovan, not cheap for us. 73 mountains, 73 hills, 70 resistance. This guy's going to be a great climber. In, at just 20 years of age, a year from now, Mark Donovan's going to be probably a 75 overall already. The key for this to work, it's not just this first group. And this is the big point here. Career mode is not a one season kind of thing. You're not going to build a world tour team right off the bat. The way the game is set a lot of these guys are going to be in the final year of their contract and they're going to come out of the block uh, of the blocks into that next season demanding a whole lot more money and we're going to end up losing a bunch of those riders so this is not by itself a sustainable team that's going to carry us into the world tour because we're going to end up replacing a lot of these riders but these are the type of riders you go after now a lot of these guys are going to be one or two years left on their contract and probably nobody's going to have three years left on their contract almost all of this starting group by the end of the second season probably gone from the team maybe some are re-signed the key is to have a whole bunch of high potential young riders that are still affordable where you sign them and then signing them to the three-year deal. That's how it happens. Now, let's get into the final phase of this. I will show you, and I'm going to go ahead and take this team and I'll quick sim to our dossier period how to go. So we've moved into the season and you can see what kind of budget we're working with. So right now the base is 116, so that's even a slightly higher uh, than what we had and of course we are spending what was that 80 of that a poor season will bring it down to 101 and there's a possibility a strong possibility that's going to happen because i'm not going to actually participate in any races as we move forward 130 145 for the higher end i'm expecting we're going to be around that 101 or 116 kind of range they want a stage win in perry nice Breton classic french championships and Perry tour it's a french sponsor uh, that a Catalan one it's not myself but it just happens that you know follows the channel name so i went ahead and picked that one as our custom team uh, in terms of those demands we're looking at everything to here and that's all national road championships uh the Perry nice is a big one stage win there and no idea whether any of that's going to actually happen in terms of the squad uh the popularity that they're not too happy with what we have. Van Wilder is helping. Uh, Barbier is helping. But we're a bit off on what the sponsor demands. So it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to keep it above uh, the happy zone. Now, one of the keys to building a World Tour team on a budget is your staff management. Not your funds in general, but your staff. Contracts ending in 2020 does not count against budget. But if you extend any of these, it's going to add one year to their contract. If you've extended, it now counts 
against that 116 or that 101,000 that we would potentially have. Do not extend until after you've signed all your riders, and then you can use your maximum budget for riders and riders alone. Staff counts if it's already re-signed, doesn't count before that, and you can go over your budget to sign staff, but you can't go over your budget to sign riders. So as long as you sign your staff or re-sign your staff post-hiring period, you're okay. Now, training is going to be one of the important keys. As soon as possible, you're going to need to get the best trainers you can get your hands on. And young riders, majority of them are going to be groundbreaking in style. Having two modern trainers like we have, probably not a good thing. I'm going to need two groundbreaking style trainers because the bulk of the riders, you can see the entire team is under the age of 24. And of course, if you haven't figured it out by now, the key to success in building a world tour team on a budget is going to come down to rapid development of riders that you got for cheap and that you get for a three-year stretch. Staff that we have now is probably going to be insufficient. Unfortunately, we are on a strict budget. We've got 116000 for a balance is all, and we're not going to be able to do much with that. While the hard work begins on the 1st of May, the first four months of the year still sees plenty of work to be done. First and foremost, you need to accomplish as many of the objectives as, as you can in order to increase your budget, because every year the quality of talent in the World Tour gets slightly better. So you have to upgrade with it in order to have the budget to sign riders. And especially if you're starting with a small budget, you desperately need the money. Also, you have to work on maintaining the training, the quality of training of your riders so that they can level up as quick as possible because, of course, that's the key to success is having good young prospects that can develop over a three-year period. And checking in with this team, quick simming everything, they've done relatively well. They're fifth place in the Continental Rankings, 24th in the Super Prestige, even though they've only grabbed two wins so far this season. Checking in on the expectations for what that budget is going to be going forward. Of course, we're at that 116,000 now. I figured, I figured we could end up down at 101,000 at the beginning of the season. But so far, things are actually looking pretty good. We're having a successful season so far, which would see that budget hit 130,000. I have a feeling there's still a good chance, though, that it is going to drop to acceptable before long. Only one of our five major objectives has hit at this point but of course the fine the signing day is the last day of july so august october not going to happen so realistically we'll know a lot more about whether it's going to be 116 or 130 after the end of june before you can properly jump into your dossiers you must know what you're working with one way to prepare for those upcoming dossiers is to use your scouts throughout the early part of the season to scout talent scout this type of group, the low 70s, but very young, see what their potential is. So that way, by the time you reach the dossiers, you already have that information. Now, I haven't done that for the sake of the tutorial, and that's going to make it a little more challenging for me to find appropriate talent going forward. See that thus far, all of the riders are 72 or below, with just one exception. Van Welder was one of our two riders who was a 72 already at the start of the season, and the one we were looking at as a potential hot prospect because he was just 19 years of age. And sure enough, he's hit a big level up here through the first four months of the season and is now a 74. That happened in a single jump. One thing to keep in mind is he might be a 74 right now, but we can't sign him until August 1st. So we've done four months of the season. We still have three months before we're going to get to sign anyone. So this is going to change. Now, the big thing we've got to watch out for is when our contract's expiring. And you can see right now, roughly half the team has one more year left on their contract. They had two-year contracts. The other half, it's all expiring this year. So we're not going to have a lot of money left locked up and we're going to need to either spend a lot of points trying to re-sign riders and spend a lot of money trying to re-sign this good young talent or we're going to have to get after some new talent. Now the thing about riders coming back to your team, it is always easier in terms of the points, in terms of the difficulty, it's always easier to try to re-sign riders. However, 
there's that budget aspect. And when you're working on a budget, sometimes that's just not going to be able to happen. We should have a decent shot at all of these writers, with the possible exception of Van Wilder leveling up too much too fast. At a 74, it won't be cheap, but it'll be cheap enough, especially with the type of budget we're thinking we might have. In that case, we should be able to retain anyone and everyone we want from the list. And to know that, we need to know what these guys' potential is. Van Welder is a 4'7", currently making 11000 Now, we know he's going to ask for more than that, but if he's asking for about 20000 a 19-year-old stage racer who's already got 75 mountain, 76 time trial, you've got to expect that this is, in three years anyway, going to be a hefty contender. Uh, in fact, at this point, we would be talking about three and a half years still because it's only May. Three and a half years from now, he could be an 80. That's how you build a world doer team, is getting a rider like this. Now the key is, is that he's got to still be a 74 come August 1st. If he's already leveled up again and he's a 76 or better, no way we can afford to re-sign this guy. Aliotti's a 5'8", so that's a good rider to re-sign. Barbier, Barcelo's one you would let go. Barcelo we would not bother with. In general, higher potential and higher starting value meaning the highest we can manage to afford, more likely it's going to end up being a better rider. There are plenty of times, though, there where we will get duds. You can sign a 4.7, and it's only the 4, but it's a low ceiling. They're a 72 overall, and three years from now, they're a 73 overall. Or maybe a 74. It happens, and it's definite hit and miss. But play the odds, sign young, sign already talented, and sign with high potential. And do it to three-year contracts. If you can keep it within budget, the greater the, the selection your pool is, if you have 10 young riders for or higher potential, and all of them are 70-plus starting out, you're looking pretty good to have three of those riders in three years' time be excellent. And if you follow that model every season, you're going to keep paying writers much less than what the opposition is paying. And you're going to have this rotating group of every year as a, a group kind of reaches that potential over that three-year span, they're going to keep contributing for you year after year after year. And eventually, you'll work your way into the World Tour, especially once you have a few writers who have really developed well. And when it comes to the dossiers, you have to keep in mind one very fundamental element here. We need to sign quite a few riders. Half of this team is going to have an expiring contract, and we already have a very small team for this level. We're going to need to sign roughly 10 riders. You start with 38, 30 dossier points on the 1st of May, and then every two weeks or mid-month and then beginning of the next month again, you're going to add six more points. And eventually, by the time we hit August 1st and actually open that signing period, we will ultimately have 60 dossier points. Eve Lampart might be a great writer and the best writer who is expiring right now. But there's a couple things to look at. One, he's already 29 years of age. Two, it's going to use 30 dossier points, meaning literally every point we have right now and then only giving us six in a couple weeks and then six in a couple weeks and then six and then eventually only 30 more points. We're not going to get 10 writers if we sign Eve Lampart or if we spend our dossier points on Eve Lampart. And also, very relevant here, is he's just not interested. He's in the red range. He's in the 0 to 15% out of 100 potential interest in joining our team. And then there's that whole budget factor as well. And we don't even need to go into that. We're not going to be signing Eve Lampart. We're probably not going to be signing Thomas de Ghent either for a few reasons. One, he's a 78 overall. He's going to demand a whole lot of money, which we just don't have. And even though it's only 14 points and he does have some interest, and if we were to open a dossier on him now, there's a chance that we could raise that to the level necessary to bring the cost down of bringing him into the team and actually potentially signing. And yes, a 78 overall in Thomas de Ghent will help us a lot in making the world tour. But there's going to be a couple of problems. One, he's a Barador, so he's not going to earn us a lot of points and reputation, which is going to bring down this cost. This cost comes down as you build your team reputation. Now, I don't have a ton of team reputation right now because A, we're in our first season, and B, I'm quick simming everything anyway and it's reflected on your next season. So how we do this season 
will be impacted next season. But DeGent, most importantly, at 33 years of age, is already fully developed and has most likely already begun his decline due to age. He's going to get worse. So in a year or in two years, he's going to be a 77 or a 76. The only way to build a world tour caliber team on a budget is to go with young riders who will develop. Jasper Philipson would be a fantastic signing. 22 years of age, 77 overall right now, will probably be a 79 or 80 when he is done. He's going to be a very good sprinter. Philipson is somebody I'm pretty high on. He's got good, not the best potential, but he's got definitely good potential, and he should have a relatively high ceiling. Filippo Ghana is another one, but he's already fairly developed. I don't think he's going to develop a whole lot. Philipson, 20 points isn't a ton for dossiers. Yes, it's a lot. I'd rather be spending under 15 on virtually every rider I ever go after because you need to spread that out. 60 does not go very far, and you can't put all your eggs in one basket in this game if you want to find some success. But with 0.15 interest, chances are at the end of the dossier period, he will not hit 100%. So he's going to cost a lot of money to sign. And yes, having a 77 is really good, but it's not going to leave us any room to sign others. And we need three good riders to make World Tour, not one. You say, well, we can sign him now and then go after others later next year. With what money? And how many results are we going to get with a single good rider? with a single discipline that he's capable in. It's a difficult prospect. You are far better off signing 10 riders for the cost of the one Jasper Philipson who can give you three or four Jasper Philipsons. That's why it can be done, but it's challenging. So what we need to do first and foremost is we need to get after some riders that are in uh, a certain amount of points that are more achievable. 14 and below is probably achievable, uh, but it's also going to come down to cost. And if you remember from the looks of our team, when we even hit 72, we're starting to drastically increase what it costs to hire a rider at 73 and 74. 75 and above at this point is most likely untouchable, but not entirely. 75 might be achievable. So let's look for young options. Pavel Sivakov would be a good young option. 22, 14 points, just a 74 overall, so he's a little more achievable. Interest is still quite low, and I'm not sure you're going to get Sivakov up to 100%, not the first year. So all of these guys, I think, are probably a bit too far out of reach. So we're going to go down into the 11 pointers now, and you can see now we're starting to to get down into something a little more manageable. We only have a handful of 75s and 76s, fairly young, but none of them are super young. And when you have a 24-year-old who's a 75 overall, the way the leveling system works in this game is there are 20 levels. Somebody who's a 75 is probably three, four, five levels. And the higher you get in level, the longer it takes to level up. So Garcia Cortina in three years is going to be 27 and he's probably going to be fully developed and he's still probably only going to be about a 78 and Garcia Cortina is probably going to cost us 25,000 so that's going to use a lot of budget and he's not going to develop a ton. Is that the kind of writer that can get us into the world tour? Possibly. He, he can contribute to that but he's going to cost us an awful lot. I think we're going to need to look a little bit lower, a little bit smaller. I think we could sign the right 74. Now by the right 74, I mean somebody who's a little bit younger and lesser known. Pavel Sivakov is somebody who is very well known. He's, he's got a big reputation already. He's going to be expensive. If we open his profile, I bet you it, he's already making quite a lot of money. So Gino Mater is somebody who is of a similar level. He's a 74 mountain, 74 resistance, 23-year-old climber. We don't actually know about him, but you can see he was making 15000 He's probably going to ask for about... 20. Not easy. Could be a leader. You can afford to bring in kind of one maybe strong leader. I suggest looking for somebody who is 23 or younger and not on a team, which means that they're they're still new. They will generally sign for less. So as we get down here, we've got Andreas Leknesud, a 73 overall, time trialist, just 20 years of age. It's 11 points, but he's got some interest already at 30, 50. And actually, can kind of double up. Yeah, he's a time trialist first and foremost, because he's a decent climber. 
And with some training, he could maybe be a GC kind of rider. But at 20, he's probably not going to have super high salary demands. He's coming from Uno X, where, yeah, he's making a bit of money, but it's not a ton. Lechnesund could be a prospect, and if we had a 5'8 potential with that, I'd probably add him in. Now, one thing we can do is we can assign a scout for now just to to do that. That's a lot of points to commit to, to go after somebody, but again, younger equals better in this game for sure. Tom Pidcock is not a first-year rider. Somehow has ended up without a team. I don't know how that happened. Uh, he's an excellent rider for that to to have happened. But in the time of COVID, you never know, I suppose. You see just how well-balanced he is. He can do so much. Technically a puncher. That's the kind of rider that I think would do really well. Nine points, 20 years of age, already has quite a bit of interest. Here's the thing about interest and how this is going to work. And we're going to go ahead and pick Pidcock as our first target. You can see that it ranges from zero to 100%, but it's also broken down into three color schemes, red, yellow, green. Red is zero to 30%. Any rider in the red will not sign with you, even if you can get them to 100% on the contract negotiation. Any rider in the yellow, which is 31%, to 99 percent will sign for you but they'll carry a negative into the contract negotiations which means it's going to take more to get them to sign on and it does not matter whether it's that 31 percent or 99 percent it will have the exact same impact at 100 percent green and that's only at 100 percent riders become more affordable they have a positive outlook on your team they want to sign for you and they therefore, during contract negotiations, will sign for less money than they would for that single percentage point below that. Getting riders into the green is pivotal for having a world tour team on a budget. Now, if you're developing a good core of young riders on your squad, it's really important that you get a lot of those riders re-signed and you get them into that green. And that's how you can maintain and and build at least from a handful of riders. So Van Wilder would be our top target retaining him. He's already our best rider and has high potential and is a stage racer and could really do a lot for the team if we can afford to get him back. Again, he'll need to still be a 74, but I think we could probably get away with it. It's going to cost us six dossier points, but he's already got fairly high interest and again players within your own squad are always a bit easier to sign rubio is another target and we can get after him for this particular squad i've got nine expiring contracts after going through those nine riders there are five that i would like to retain so far i've been able to already add four of them to our dossiers the last one is olaf koish who's a 5-8 potential a 70 overall right now just 18 years of age 4.0 i only have two currently at 50, 75 interest, it shouldn't be hard to get him to 100. Speaking of getting to 100, here's how that process works. So 1st of May, we added these four riders to our dossiers. Now on the 15th of May, we've had one session of them uh, seeing an increase by having an open dossier. So Van Welder added 22%. That is going to be a consistent number. So he's going to add 22% again on the 1st of June. That'll hit 100%. Pidcock, unfortunately, increased from 9 to 12 points, and that's why we only have 2 points left instead of 5, which we would have been done on our retention of riders. Pidcock, though, has jumped to 85, so he'll easily hit 100. Here's the one where you have to do a little bit of math. And like I said, it's consistent. Rubio was at 75, added 7%. He will add 7% each dossier period. So we have 1st and middle of June. We have 1st and middle of July. And then August, we begin dossiers. At that rate, he will hit 100%. He only has 18 to go. In three dossier periods, he'll reach it. Currently, at least all of the four initial riders, they will all hit 100%. And that's fantastic because that's going to make all four of them much more affordable. Jenny Etz, who we just added in as well, is 50 to 75. You figure he'll probably reach it, but if he's only at 50% and only gaining, say, 10% per, might not make it. Sometimes a sponsor is completely unimpressed by how you do in national team races, but it was clear that we have a sponsor that does care about that as we had two major objectives 
for our home nation in France for both the individual time trial and the road race. One was a success while the other was not. And so that boosted our sponsor confidence a little bit. But from seven overall quality results, eight if you count the French one, including a win for the national championships in Hungary, it was actually a one-two finish in that. We jump in sponsor confidence uh, by a wide margin to nearly 100%. It's about 98. And that's enough to see our money for next season rise from 116 to 145 a year from now. So that's a pretty significant jump. And 145 is relatively easy to get yourself into the world tour, bare bones at least. So the first step when you hit the signing day, it is so useful to know exactly how much money you have to work with and what your goals and objectives are going into that signing period. So the way I do this is under the team view, the squad view, and still on that general tab, I first sort through end of contract because once you get into contract itself, it doesn't sort properly, but you can sort all of your riders that will remain under contract. So Pronsky is the end of that list. Then switching over to the contract tab, it keeps that same order and now I can simply add this up which is 36.5 thousand subtract that from our balance for next year which is 145 thousand and we're dealing with roughly 108 thousand so I've got 108 thousand to spend the the second piece is I'm only going to have seven riders left minimum is 16 realistically we should be pushing a little further than that but we're still a small team bare minimum is 16 so we've got 16 riders uh sorry nine riders at least to sign and we have a hundred thousand to do so from there we're able to get into the dossier you can do it from the search screen as well there's multiple ways but i do like to start with the dossiers why not why wouldn't you uh, start there stand a wolf we had picked out at a 73 I think it was he just leveled up somewhere in the last week or two now a 75 Pidcock also leveled up so he's a 75 the good news on Van Wilder is he has not leveled up again since hitting that 74 a while back and everybody else is still 72 or below we added in some new riders and we got the boost we needed to get them to 100%. Unfortunately, Joel Suter, here's that perfect example, 99% and still it's going to be on yellow. It's the same as being on 31%. Very unfortunate there. Very unlucky that we couldn't get 1% more, but that was also somebody we just added in in the middle of July. Stand a wolf though, a 75 overall and just in the yellow might not be an easy signing for us. Currently, the team has 72 points. That's the average of the three riders that are already signed. And this is what is required to get us into that higher level. Right now, we're 25th overall, but we've got a lot of money to spend. We could probably splash the cash and we might be able to get three riders good enough to get us into world tour we wouldn't have much left and we wouldn't have much long-term stability so if you're desperate to get in with that kind of money i think we could make that happen i don't play for that short-term desperate move though unless you kind of know it's the last season uh, that you're gonna have and even then i'm i still don't like to overdo that because you cause so much harm when you do maybe one bad contract but when you take on two or three bad contracts it can absolutely destroy what you're trying to do uh, in seasons going forward re-signing van wilder is essential i think to this squad so that's where we would where i would begin four seven on the potential obviously is already leveled up and is just 20 years of age and is definitely our gc contender on the team and we could see that thanks to the high interest level they're actually not even looking for that much money at all Easy signing. Definitely got to go with that three years. And I'm fine with them being a leader. And they sign right on the dot. And there you go. See, the salary they're not overly thrilled about, but it's enough. And it's probably just enough. We might have been able to get away with ever so slightly less. But that's good. They're signed. Now, one really important step is I track down this, the writers that I end up signing and exactly how much I sign them for. Because then I'm counting that money out from that overall total. We had 108,000. That was just 8.8 .8 of it. So we have 99,000 left and taking that down. That's pretty good because that's already one quality rider going forward. If not this year, getting us into world tour in the next one or two years will easily be one of those top three riders helping pull us into 
uh, world tour status and at a salary of less than 10,000 for the next three years. Pidcock, three six on the potential is not amazing, but as long as it's not that three, they'll still develop a lot. They're only 21 years of age, 75 mountain, and sometimes you got to take a little bit of a risk if you're going to get to world tour. It's not always going to be slam dunk 5-8 potential on every rider. If you take the scouting seriously and start much earlier in the year, unlike what I did where I didn't do that at all, for this tutorial, you would have known about Pidcock much sooner and you can make that decision earlier whether you want to risk that he's only a 3 or a 4 in the potential as opposed to a 5 or 6. If he's a 5 or 6, he's still going to be a good product. For me, I think it's worth it. And at 12,000, oh yeah, we can afford 12,000 for somebody who's a 75 already. But you can see the difference here. What we had available in the just the random signing of contracts, 12,000 is what it was taking to sign a 72. We're going to get a 75 for that. And we're going to get him for three years. And so he's already going to come in immediately as a team leader for us. And, and this is going to boost things quite a bit in our potential to maybe do something sooner rather than later. I'm going to try to offer slightly less here. Uh, they've got him labeled as a sprinter, and I don't think that's a good idea, but we will try a leader. Hates the money, but everything else is good. We can get right back to what he was actually asking, and I think that might be enough. And it is. He signs 12000 We didn't get to that 100% status that we were seeking with DeWolf, but we do have that little bit of money to spend. And I think we might still be able to afford DeWolf and 22 years of age and high potential is still that type of rider we're looking for. So we're going to take a little bit of a chance here. We're going to spend our nine points and see if a contract is doable. Now that kind of money is definitely doable, but I have a feeling we're going to end up having to go a bit higher than that in order to sign. But we've got four chances to get him signed. Now he's coming down as an absolute sprinter as a classics rider. I'm going to try leader. And then three years for that money that they're asking. And there you go. The leader role is good. The three years is fine. It's the interest and the money that comes up a bit short. But we've got three chances to get this going along. So we'll go up by a small amount now and see how that does. They still don't like. So I better spend a little bit more. We're going to make a little bit of a risk here. 14000 is well, well, well within what we can actually afford. Oh. <sighs> so close they are happy with the money but there you go see it's that interest that's not quite uh putting it over the line and that's what's holding us back if they had that 100 percent, we would have signed him probably three thousand ago i think 15 will be enough and i don't think 16 is going to make really any significant difference on that let's see if that's the case oh, it's enough it's enough 15 2 it's not a great contract but it's definitely not a bad contract and a 15-2 is more like what you would pay for a 73 or 74 we're getting a 75 out of that so it's still a fairly decent contract so after taking a hot minute to go through and re-sign all of those other riders that were already on the roster that we wanted back all of them for 5,000 or less we're now looking at 57,000 still to spend which is a lot of money compared to what I'm used to on trying to build a squad we have now got 14 signed for next season. We had 16. Like I said, 16 is bare minimum. You want to start pushing towards 18 to 20 riders when you can. But we have options on what to do going forward. How do we go from here? We still have a little bit to spend, but there is a major limitation that we're going to come up on here in just a second, and I'll show you that one. With Pitcock and DeWolf, plus the returning five riders. We're looking now at a squad that the top end has been replaced by Pidcock and DeWolf with Van Welder as the other. So we've absolutely raised our profile from where we were. And looking down at the index, now just August 1st, we've jumped to 20th. Now what that's going to do is that's going to comfortably get us into continental pro and we're still very very young i mean you look at the roster now and the youngest rider next season is 24 and our new guys on top our top three riders are all 22 or less so it's a ridiculously good young squad and now a majority of those guys are signed up for three years now we have an existing group that's still only one year left on their contract and that's going to be a problem and that is also a problem right now you are limited by dossier points you are limited by transfer points in that same fashion you get 60 dossier points 
you also only get 60 transfer points. Now, as a small team that just came in, our points aren't great. I mean, it's it's 30 to go after a top rider. It's 17 to go after good riders. We only have 12. So if we were to go by points, just to get down to 12, we're looking at 11 minimum. Best rider remaining that we can sign, who's also one of the worst riders in the field, uh, at least as a person, Gianni Mascan. Mascan's a 76 overall. That would boost us a little further, and that might get us into the top 18 top 19 but it's not gonna keep us there we're not gonna make world tour next season it's a project gonna take a little bit you've got to build it in time and we absolutely have the foundation for that because all of these new guys that we just signed we've got three top tier riders well okay let's say second tier riders right now but ridiculously young and all have good potential and they're all signed up for three years and they're they all have very manageable contracts so for the next three years Those guys are going to grow and develop, and probably all three of them is going to be a minimum 77 three years from now. They alone can probably get us up into the World Tour. We can dump money on an expensive rider right now. We've got 57,000. I mean, you can definitely spend that money, but what are you going to get for that? That one rider is not going to pull us up into a World Tour. Garcia Cortina might be a little bit better option. 24 years of age, just to 75. But that's another high development potential. Gives you four riders to go off of who are pretty good. Four leaders might not be that expensive. That's definitely a decent way to go. If you go a little bit lower, if you get a 75, 74 below, we could spend another 15, 20,000. That's going to use up all of our transfer points. Now, remember, we still are actually short on riders. We still only have 14 for next season. We need not just one more. 15 you can kind of actually survive with because you need seven and seven at any given time that's 14 you need to have room for at least one injury that's 15 but sometimes you'll have a couple injuries active and sometimes you get three races at the same time that's rare and you can normally get around that uh, in your calendar and get rid of a race Uh, so you can work with small numbers so you know it wouldn't be the worst thing to go after another 75 and have a few leaders and and work with that. Garcia Cortina? Yeah, I could see that. Uh, or we could dip a little bit lower, a little more affordable. I mean, remember, the interest isn't quite there. So these guys could be asking 17, 18, 20,000 pretty easily. But again, we can afford a bit. But the fantastic news is regardless of who you were to go after here, 15, okay, you got a slight problem on your hands next season with 15 riders. You could make it work. You can definitely make it work. You can work around that. And we, we absolutely have the possibility to go after a couple of these lower guys. Victor Cashin has the 100% interest as a 71. Uh, may or may not have the potential because I scouted him after the fact. Uh, Chen, same. Suter might cost a little bit extra, but he's only a 72, so it shouldn't cost that much to go after him. You could sign those three guys and add them, but that's going to use up 12 points right there. So we can use our remaining 12 points on the three riders that remain Or you can look for one bigger name to lead the team. Either way, if you're doing this, we're looking at, you know, five, nine, maybe 12,000 for those three. Or 15, 16,000 for one rider. Maybe 20,000. Either way, that's not that much. And with 57, that stores away 40 grand for next season. Where if we have a good year, boost our profile the cost of points goes down a little bit and you can afford to go after some bigger names and we have a smaller group there's only seven with expiring contracts next season if you retain three or four of those then you're only spending x amount of points on those four riders unlike this season where we had five guys to re-sign and lost nine overall so we had nine slots to refill that's a lot of points to commit And, I mean, you can see just where we're at on those points isn't cheap. And, like I said, we only have the 12 points that that are even left at this point. But that's how you build a World Tour squad on a budget. You've got to be very careful with how you spend your cash. And you've really got to target kind of your limitation is generally about a 75. If you go anything above that, they instantly jump into the mid 20,000 to 30,000 signing. And that's even when you have that 100% interest. So target those 74s and 75s, sign those riders 
for that minimum, that 10, 15,000, or even less than 10,000 sometimes, like getting Van Wilder back for 8-8, eight, eight, that was fantastic. That's a, an amazing contract. Van Wilder is going to be a heck, heck of a rider, even if he doesn't have amazing potential. Guaranteed, in three years, minimum, he's a 77. He could be a 78, 79. He might be one of the best riders in the world in three years. We don't know, but guaranteed. He's going to be the kind of level we need him to be at to potentially get us into World Tour. And DeWolf and Pidcock might do that as well. It takes a couple years to kind of turn around your aged contract system where you have about half your guys on one year and half your guys on a two-year contract when you start. But once you get through that first couple years and get that turned around, you could be seeing World Tour by season number three pretty much every time. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Thanks for tuning in for this look at how to build a World Tour squad on a budget. Be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you want to see more, hit subscribe. I've got a lot of tutorials on Pro Cycling Manager, and I've got more to come. Also, Pro Cycling Manager 2021 is less than two months away, and look for my career mode episodes on those. And I still have my series from PCM 2020 ongoing now, 160 plus episodes into the career mode one alone. I've got a couple other active series going as well, so be sure to check those out. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there, and bye for now.